Hi everyone, I'm Don Singletary and welcome to the channel. Today, a live trade coming up. We're going to talk about Globex, how it works, and if you're not trading the early morning, evening, and even the overnight hours, you could be missing out on some money-making opportunities. Also, I have a tip for you that can help you avoid losses. That and more coming up right now. You can almost trade seven days a week, 24 hours a day now. The overnight market is simply called the Globex. It's an electronic platform that all brokers, all futures traders with accounts can access absolutely free. Let me say that again. It's free. There is no application. There's no request you have to make. It's completely transparent, automatic. You don't have to do anything. You trade after hours. Whether you know it or not, you're trading on Globex. It's totally automatic. Not everybody is available during the regular day session hours. And uh, some people like to get up early in the morning or stay up late at night. And Globex is a way you can do that. Now, there's several things different about the Globex market. In a moment, I'm going to do a live trade on Globex and give you uh, an example of how it works. Now, one of the nice Nice things about Globex is that it's uh, normally it's much less volatile. It's not as fast moving as the day trading hours. Now, some people like that and some don't. If you're a beginning trader and you uh, are just learning by doing your practice trading or your first real few trades, you may want to look into Globex and, uh, and try the practice trading there because you may find out that at least in the beginning, it moves a little slower than the day session, meaning it's a little less risky. Okay, now on to today's live trade here have my standard setup and Tastyworks here. And this is an early morning trade. I'm going to be using the S&P 500, the MACD standard default settings there. The time is 8.34 in the morning. Now this is a see it, click it, trade it screen on Tastyworks. To sell something, you just simply click the bid price and it creates the order. And here I'm changing my order to two contracts. I'm going to short two of the S&P Micro E-minis. There's my confirm. I've been filled. And on the positions click, you see I am short two contracts at 33.57. And uh, I then go back to the panel and select the uh, chart icon. And I'm back in the trade here. So I'm short two at 33.57. And uh, the time is about 8.34 in the morning. I'm just making some uh, housekeeping adjustments to my screen here to get it like I want it to look. I can use that zoom slide up in the upper right to uh, zoom in on the trade a little bit so that it's easier to see. And I can see my uh, MACD down in the bottom is uh, it's a go for this trade to short. Possible target. Now, why did I pick 3350? No particular reason, actually. Uh, I just uh, had to get some idea of where I might want to go with this trade. Now, let me give you a little background. This trade was at 8.34. We're two minutes into it right now. You see that uh, line over here, the vertical candlestick, right at 8.30. Um, this is on a Thursday morning at 8.30 Eastern Time. Now, all traders should know if they're going to trade uh, during this time frame that 8.30 a.m. on Thursdays is when the United States government releases the unemployment figures. And they were a little bit bearish this morning, which is what prompted me to go ahead and sell these contracts. Now, it's two S&P micro E-minis. They're $5 a point, so two of them is... Uh, ten dollars per point now in the green circle over on the right you can see here that the the um, the speed of the trading how many uh, the frequency of the trading is very slow compared to the day day session and uh, the market's not varying very much either that's that low lower volatility that you find on the globex market during most times now, just to review, after the 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time jobs report, which was a little bearish, I thought, I shorted two of the S&P micro e-minis. So I'm trading at uh, $10 for every one point. What I haven't told you about this trade is that it's going to last a long time. Now, I put it on at 8.34 a.m. Eastern Time, and I fully intend to be out completely out of this trade, one way or the other, by the time the day session begins at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. As I've explained many times in my videos, I do not like to trade or be in a trade at the 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time market opening. 
So what I'm going to do is advance this trade in time up to 8.46. And now we're going to see we'll be 12 minutes into the trade. And let's take a close look at it. 12 minutes in. So now the time is 8.46 and we still have the live screen up. You can see we're trading 33.59 and a quarter. So we're down about $22 and a half right now on the trade at $10 a point. And the maximum drawdown on this trade is going to be uh, at 33.60, which is three points or $30 down. That's going to be the maximum drawdown on the trade. Okay, the time now is 8.46. We're going to advance now and go to 9 a.m. So there we go. It's now 9 o'clock. I've been in the trade for 26 minutes. And guess what? Look at this up here. I'm still basically even money, 33.57 in short two contracts. Exactly where I was uh, almost half hour ago when the trade began. So what does it mean when the market doesn't go anywhere, up or down in about half an hour? Well, because of that uh, unemployment bearish news at 8.30, I would gander a guess here that people are probably trying to make up their minds which way the market might go at 9.30 when it opens. So I'm going to hang in with the trade and uh, I still have my conviction that the market might drift down. Of course, if it doesn't, I have my finger on the trigger and I'm ready to exit this trade. And if I lose any money on it, it's going to be very, very little because time's drawing close to 9.30 now and I have to be out of a trade by then. And I've explained why. Now, I told you when this trade began that I expected Globex volatility to be very, very low. But in, in the fact it hasn't moved one point in a half an hour, uh, I'm a little bit amazed at that because that's pretty uh, unusual. With only a few minutes to go, and now I'm starting to ask myself if it hasn't moved anywhere in a half an hour, what the hell makes me think it's going to move down in the next few minutes? Uh, well, I just don't know. I don't have an answer for that. But like I say, I'm on guard here and I'm determined not to lose more than 10 or 15 bucks if this trade goes the wrong way on me. But I have a few more minutes before the market opens at 9.30. So uh, I've been here this long. I might as well uh, wait and see what happens. Now, I'm not going to keep you in suspense any longer. It's time to bring this trade to a conclusion. So now I'm going to go from it's uh, just a, a minute after 9 o'clock all the way up until about uh, 18 minutes past 9 o'clock. So that's where we're going next. Hang on. Okay, now it's 9.18, 12 minutes before the day session opens. I've got to do something with this trade. I put in a limit order to buy it back at uh, 33.52 uh, during the time we skipped there. And now we're very, very close to that. And uh, I'm worried that I might give up money on the trade rather than make that extra five bucks that I'm trying to do. I'm not going to risk 42.50 trying to make another five dollars. That would be ris ridiculous. So uh, I'm going to pull the trigger here and get out of the trade. Now, I exited quickly with a limit order, so I had to remember to go back and cancel my previous limit order to buy it back at 33.52. It was kind of fast. If you're new, I know that makes your head spin, but it couldn't be helped that time. You can go back and uh, pause it and look at it in slower motion for yourself if you need to. It's a great trade, though. It took a long time, but it was well worth it. So, a uh, trade that lasted 45 minutes, and I had a profit of $45, four and a half points. Two S&P 500 micro E-minis at $10 a point. So that turned out to be a good trade. It is unusual for a 45-minute trade to do nothing for 42 minutes. And then it kind of kicked in the last three minutes and I had to act fast and, uh, and, and take the money while it was there. And uh, you have to be ready. And I guess suppose that's a good example for a trade because it does nothing, almost lulls you to sleep for a long time. And then you really have to pay close attention to be able to get that profit out of there. More importantly, not give it back and not have a loss. Remember rule number one, preservation of capital. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. You know, even though they're called unrealized profits, it is real money in your account. And it's one mouse click away from, away from being cash. So don't let that name unrealized profits fool you. I promised you a trading tip today. I'm going to take this chart from, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, one afternoon a couple of weeks ago. But I wanted to show you a pattern that might save you some time. And it might keep you from trading during times that maybe you shouldn't be trading. And sometimes 
as I like to say, it's the trades you don't make because you prevent losses uh, that can make you a lot of money. They're just as important as the trades you do make. And uh, they're total opposites, but both very, very important. Here's a time right here between 2.30 and uh, about uh, 3.20 in the afternoon. Here's a market here that only varies like five or six points in uh, over uh, almost an hour here. And you see it has uh, the red and white candlesticks alternate about every third candlestick. And uh, you see down on the MACD and the uh, vertical green lines down there, the momentum is just wavering like ocean waves or ripple. And the market's really going nowhere. This is one of the most extremely hard types of market to trade. Your swings are only five or ten points. And even if you're really good, you're you're going to get half the points, maybe. And then you got the, mar the market reversing uh, direction. Uh, every 10 or 15 minutes and uh, when you when you see that just take a look at this chart when you see that that's a time that uh, maybe it's time to go for a walk or do something else and uh, that's today's trading tip for you is uh, don't uh, I know I know you prepare a lot to trade and you have certain times you a lot to trading but it do, you get dressed up there's nowhere to go sometimes and uh, it can cost you money trying to jump in there and force a trade Hey, be sure and uh, subscribe to the channel because uh, you won't miss uh, being notified about new videos when they come along once or twice a week. And uh, next video, we're going to do some special things with the Tastyworks software, which I think you might enjoy. Trading happens between the years, and that's why the most important book, uh, most important chapter, in my opinion, in my book, is the trading psychology chapter. You can give the same 10 traders the same market, the same software, the same everything, and get 10 different results. And that's because we're all different. We have different uh, tolerances for risk. We have different mental speeds. We have different experience. And we have different backgrounds that we bring to the table and attitudes about money and uh, greed and fear and all those things that play inside of our heads. So uh, give my book a try. Look for the book link in the text below the video. The sales from that book help support the free videos here on the channel. I would appreciate that very much. And something really important, hit the like button because that's the way you can tell me if you hit the like button on this video, it says, yeah, I want to see more videos like this one. And also, don't forget, I welcome your uh, comments and questions down below the video also. It helps me make a, a better channel so that more home investors can get into day trading the micro e-minis. I'm Don Singletary. It's been fun today. I hope every day is a payday for you. And thank you.